When the celebration of the Mass begins, it is marked by a change in the music. We lift up our voices in a hymn of joyous praise of God. Yes, this is a celebration and much more. Everyone stands alert and ready, anticipating all that is about to transpire. O gates, lift higher heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of Glory. The procession begins. Many of those involved in carrying out the sacred work of the liturgy process through the body of the church to the altar. Here is represented the movement of our daily journey toward our ultimate end of heaven. There is an order to the procession, a holy order or hierarchy. Just as one can see in the first account of creation a holy ordering of the world, a natural hierarchy, so there is one in most everything. The divine work brings order out of chaos. As one can consider the natural laws to be agents of created order, so too the structure and order of the Mass has a steward of this order called the Master of Ceremonies, who leads the procession and ensures the Mass goes smoothly. Then at the lead of the procession is the thurifer. He carries the thurible, out of which billows the smoke and fragrance of incense, representing the prayer of all the people that are gathered. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, O Lord. Next is the cross with our crucified Savior, the sign of God's love and our salvation, the banner and sign that stands before us in all that we do. To its right and left, under Christ's outstretched arms, are two candles. The burning flame of the candle first testifies that Jesus is the light of the world, and second, that we are to be lights in his image. Perhaps the two make us think of Mary and John at the foot of the cross. Indeed, two true lights proclaiming Christ's truth and love. Following are the seminarians, young men seeking God's will, open to a possible call to give their entire lives to Christ as priests. These, for the past few years, have been my brothers. I have seen some ordained priests and others who have discovered their call was elsewhere. Yet each of us are seeking the will of the Father. They will still remain close to my heart as a priest. Following them are the permanent deacons, many of whom are married men who heard a call to serve the church in a greater way. Their ranks make one recall their origin in the book of Acts and remind us of the service of charity, even to the gift of one's life, like that of the deacon Stephen, the first martyr. After the deacons are the priests. They have come from their parishes across the diocese to celebrate the joy of being joined by four more who have been called for service. How beautiful to see the gift God has given to his church in these priests weak, limited men infused with divine grace to do marvelous things with and for his people in Northeast Nebraska. Oh.